Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex, and this month we're doing a continuation of a video I did about a month or two ago where we installed Plex inside of a Docker container on my Synology NAS. And in that video, we talked about how easy it is to back up the container so you can keep all of your metadata and your media, but it's also very easy to move the container to something else. And here what we're going to do is move our entire Plex container from the Synology NAS onto this little mini PC that's running Linux. This is the same mini PC we looked at last month, and we're going to install the Docker container on this mini PC just by moving everything over and adjusting a couple of settings, and that should be it. We can move our entire installation almost with a snap of the finger. So let's take a look and see what this is all about. But before we dive into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how we can move our Docker installation with just a few key presses. Now, before we kick things off, I am running Ubuntu, the desktop version, and I did have to install Docker, of course, on this machine before we got started. And the way I did it is I installed the Docker engine and I followed these instructions that I found on Docker's website. It is pretty easy to do on Ubuntu. What you need to do is just copy and paste these commands into the terminal and that will get everything set up for you. It didn't take all that long to get it working and I did not encounter any errors or other problems getting set up. The process will likely be different depending on which distribution of Linux that you are using, but these were the instructions that I followed to get things up and running on my machine. Now, we've got the Docker container currently running and uh, operating uh, on my Synology NAS, and this is a small installation that has a movie here, The Abyss, along with some episodes of my kids' favorite show, Bluey. And what I want you to pay attention to here is the current state of the metadata. So for example, we have the movie here with uh, some of it watched already. So keep an eye on that for when we switch over to the other uh, server here. And the other thing I'm gonna do before I shut things down is change the thumbnail poster on the Bluey episodes here. So I'm gonna go with this one with him sitting or she <laughs> sitting on the planet. So I'm gonna click on save here and change that over because I want to move things off the default so we can prove that the metadata has carried over successfully in addition to our media. Now, where things are stored currently on the NAS are all in a single bucket here. I've got a folder called Plex Temp that we set up on the NAS when we built this Docker container initially. In here, I have my Docker Compose file, which I will show you in a minute. This is what we use to build the container in the first place. I have the media stored inside of these folders. So for example, if we jump into TV here, we'll have the Bluey episodes all lined up there. And the config folder is where all of Plex's data is currently being stored. So all we're gonna do here is take those files and just move them over to the mini PC here. And when we do that, we can rebuild the Docker container and everything should go back to exactly where it was before, but now we're going to be running on a completely different piece of hardware. And that's what's so great about Docker is its portability. So to do this, what we're going to do here is stop the Plex temp container here on the Synology NAS where it's currently located. So I'm gonna click on stop here. And this is kind of the uh, end point to what we showed off in the prior video where we built the uh, container using this interface. So now you're gonna see this going to off and it is no longer running. If I jump back to Plex here, you can see that my Plex test is done. <laughs> it is off the network, so we are good there. And what I did before I started shooting the video was I copied the media files over because they were rather large along with the Docker Compose file. But now that the server is shut down, I can very safely copy the config data over now as well. So what we're gonna do here is just drag this folder over and what it's going to do is basically duplicate everything that's currently on the Synology NAS. And once that file is done being copied, I can then edit this compose file just to give it the new location of the media directory and the config directory. And from there, we just issue a very simple command and everything's going to come right back up. So let's let this finish copying and I'll show you what to do next. 
All right, so everything is done being copied over now. We've got the media folder here with our media. We've got the config folder with all our metadata, and we have the Docker compose file. I'm going to jump over to my command line window here, and where I put this folder, and some of you may disagree with its placement, uh, but I put this inside of my home directory just for simplicity's sake here. So I made a new folder called Plex, and that's where I copied the files into. When I pull up my terminal window here, I am located in my home directory. And as you can see here, we have a Plex folder that shows up. So I can go to CD uh, space Plex. And now we are in my Plex folder where you can see those same files here. And if I type in PWD, I will get the full path to those files. And I'm just going to copy this real quick. And I'll show you why here in a second. So now what I'm going to do is edit the Docker Compose file. We're going to use the Nano Text Editor just because I like the way it looks. And we'll go ahead here and type in nano docker-compose.yml. And what that will do is it will pull up our Compose file here inside of the Nano Text Editor. And what we need to do here is point the container at the new locations of all the directories that we're using as part of our Plex install. So if you look here right now, you can see that uh, currently the config folder here, for example, right here, is pointed at a location on the Synology NAS, but now we are on this mini PC here. So what I'm going to do is just grab it from right here where the config begins, and I'm just going to delete all of this, and then I'm going to paste in the path that I copied a minute ago. So now we've updated that location. I'm going to do the same here with our media. And what I will do after we boot the container up is show you how to point it at external media instead. And I'm going to do the same here with the movies directory. And we'll paste that in. And then, oops, and then we'll do the same here with the music directory. And then we should be good to go here. So boom, we're done. Now, to save the file on the Nano Text Editor, we hit Control O to write out and hit Enter, and that will overwrite the file in the directory there. One other thing I want to point you at here are these two environment variables, the PUID and the PGID. You can see that we had both of these set to 1000 on the Synology NAS, and if you run into permission issues, this is likely where you're going to encounter them. So to fix this issue, I'm going to control X out of the nano editor here real quick. I'm going to type in ID and then my username, which is Lon Seidman. And what it's going to do is give me the UID and the group ID for this particular user. So if the number is not 1000 and you go back to your text editor, you can update those two lines with the number that you currently have. And that should resolve some of the permission issues you might run into. And that is pretty much all we need to do to get this container booted up. So why don't we build it now and see what happens. All right, so we are ready to go here. So what we're going to do is type in sudo docker compose up minus D. And what minus D will do is have the container run in the background. So I'm going to hit enter here and it's going to ask for my password. And now it is going to pull down all of the stuff here and get everything booted up. And this won't take all that long, as you can see. And now we are up and running. So now if we go back to my web browser and go back to the server, you can see we are right back where we left off, but we're on a completely different piece of hardware. So here we've got the Abyss movie here. We can see that it maintained where I left off in the film. Additionally, we've got the thumbnail that's properly updated on the Bluey episode there. If I jump into the abyss here, you can see I can click on resume and pick right up from where I left off on a completely different server. And we didn't have to remap any directories inside of Plex to do it because we've just pointed everything to the right spot inside of that container file. But what if you wanted to attach some external storage? How might we work with that? Well, why don't we attach a drive and find out? Stand by. So I want to have this external hard drive be part of my Plex installation here. And on that drive is a Star Trek movie. So what we're going to do here is stop the uh, Plex Docker container 
so that we can edit its configuration file. So what we'll do here is say sudo docker compose down. And what this will do after I type my password in is shut down the Plex server. And what we're going to do next is go in and edit that configuration file. But before we do, we got to figure out where this uh, hard drive is located on our system here. So if I go to properties here, uh, you can see that it's inside of media slash lon sideman and the drive's name is movies uh, 2 all uppercase. So we're going to note that here and we're going to uh, go back in and edit our docker compose file. And we're just going to add another line here to the volumes because I still want to keep my existing one. So I'm going to put it next to movies just for organizational sake here and I'll just do a space here and add that and say um, media. I think we had it media lon Sidebin. Let me just move this over here. Yep, media lon Sidebin. And this is going to be called movies2. And it's just on the root directory of this particular device here. And we'll just call this movies2 inside of Plex. I'll hit control O to write it out. Control X, sudo docker compose up minus D. And what it's going to do is rebuild the Plex server now uh, with that directory added. You can see that our server came back to life here very quickly. And if I go into my movies thing here, I can go in and manage the library. So we can go over to edit. And what I'm going to do now is add a folder. So we have the movies folder already. If I browse for more folders, what I should see here is movies 2. And there's my movie. And if I click Add and Save Changes, uh, what we should see after I scan the library here is now our external drive is part of this as well. So this movie is on the internal storage. This one is on the external storage. And you can see just how easy it is to work with one of these Docker containers. And if I ever wanted to move this from this computer somewhere else, I can just repeat that process all over again. And that's why I like Docker quite a bit for self-hosting in general, and Plex is a great example of how well Docker can work for a self-hosted project because you can back it up easily, you can move it easy, and it's not tied to any one piece of hardware, and that is what is so cool about Docker. So check out the first video where we built this up from scratch. This one attaches nicely to that, but hopefully these two videos together give you a sense as to the power of Docker and how it can work for you especially if you wanted more control over how your Plex installation works. And of course, this works best on Linux. And upgrades, by the way, are super, super easy on this. So what you do is just jump into that Plex directory, wherever you put it, and you execute this command, sudo docker compose down. That will shut down Plex so you can do your upgrade here. So wait for that to execute. Next is sudo docker compose pull. That will pull the latest image of the Docker container. And then we say sudo docker compose up minus D. And that's it. You're upgraded. So pretty simple stuff here. So if you've been hearing about Docker and are really eager to play with it, I think Plex is a great way to get started with Docker. It is not that hard to get up and running. Uh, both the uh, Linux server.io distribution of the Plex server and the official Plex server have very good detailed documentation to get you started. Again, you can check out the video I did with the Synology NAS and the conventions there will carry over to some of the command line stuff we just did on here. So you can start with that compose file from the beginning on your Ubuntu installation, for example, and get up and running. And what's so awesome now is that these mini PCs like this one from GMK Tech we reviewed a little while ago, are so inexpensive now, yet so powerful and so good at serving Plex and other applications, you're going to really have a lot of fun playing around with the very deep bench of awesome self-hosted applications out there, most of which now run inside of Docker containers, and you can move them all over the world and keep your data intact as you do it. So I'm a big fan of Docker. I'm still learning the ropes here. So I'm sure a lot of you will have some suggestions for me in the comments section, which I welcome because this is something I just taught myself how to do, and I'm very proud of it, but I know I could be doing better. So I'm looking forward to uh, learning from some of the experts out there. But again, if you're not an expert, Plex is a great way to get started with Docker. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.